Hey, everybody. As you're aware, just over a week ago, PS Publishing in the UK released their long-anticipated illustrated limited edition of Stephen King's 1982 collection, Different Seasons. And that collection was illustrated by Eli John. And I'm very, very honored to have Eli here with me today for a special video and a special interview. So hello to you, Eli. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Mark. Thank you. Thanks. It's, it's I'm looking forward to chatting with you about it. About it. Yeah. How, um, <clears throat> what, what a relief. I mean, how, how relieved do you feel at this point that the book is out there? It sold out a thousand copies and this is not a cheap book it sold a thousand copies in a matter of minutes. And the project is essentially like it's wrapped up. It's done. It's out there. People have seen it. They're looking forward to it. What what a relief that must be. Can you speak to that? Um. Well, be, behind the scenes, um, there is there are still. Uh, it's great to see that go out, but also a panic, uh, panic stricken situation for a, for an artist when you realise that um, when people contact you for, I, I thought this would be wrapped up, and then you then you get a remarks list, and I realise oh. I'll probably be <laughs> I'll probably be working on this for the rest of the year. Um, <laughs> No, yeah. it's no, really. It's it's great to see it. It was interesting yesterday, you know, when you see the slipcase and things, because I what I see in my head, you know, when I when I have the idea to do the um, the dust jacket, and then I think I'm going to do this, and I'm putting images together. Until you actually see the mock up like that, um, it doesn't quite even click for you how that's going to go. So when you guys see it, I kind of see it. If that makes sense. So. Um, when I saw it yesterday, it gelled, and I, I was like, I was really, I was really uh, delighted with, with how it worked, how it worked exactly how I hoped it would. Um, the, you know, the color palette's the same, um, but yeah, to to wrap up on the, um, it, yes, it's been a year, it's been a whole year working on it, uh, and I have lived, uh, breathed in. Eats and and you know uh, <laughs> dreamt bad dreams and uh, but all of them it's all and good dreams but it's all been Steve's space uh, and uh, <laughs> um, and I've li I live I've lived this world but um I, I, but that's me anyway I, I'm quite obsessive person um, so to get really I think a lot of us guys are right uh, can you yeah yeah I, look yeah. Um, of course, we we so you know you know once bitten by the there's no escape. Yeah, absolutely. I've never been contracted to illustrate or have anything to do with an official Stephen King release, and I still sleep, dream, think. Um, the stories, the books, the characters I have uh, for the better part of my life. So I totally get it, but. Tell me a little bit about yourself. I have to admit that prior to different seasons, I wasn't familiar with your <laughs> work as an artist. Tell me a little bit about your artistic progression and how long have you been a commercial artist? Um, okay, yeah. Well, the reason nobody, uh, I don't think many people have heard of my work before because I've actually only been um, doing this professionally for the last three years. Oh, um, and in the last three years, I've kind of managed to keep a continuum of amazing projects have happened um, and, and culminating in this one, which, of course, is the biggest of, of all of them. Um, but no, I, I've only been doing this professionally for, for, for the last three years. Um, and I that started with um, the first professional project I did was um, I. I pitched, well, a friend of mine who's an editor uh, at Barnes & Noble um, called Stefan. He, uh, I think, I still don't even know this for a fact, but I think he sent some images to Jared at Centipede Press um, of M.R. James. I, I was doing um, the great ghost story writer uh, in the UK, um, Victorian Edwardian ghost stories. And, and he'd seen the images and I think he knew that Jared was doing a Masters of the Weird Tale, uh, M.R. James, and pitched these things. And then I got in uh, contact with Jared. And uh, as Jared is, like the most terse man on earth, what one word? Uh, well, three words. <laughs> yeah, You're yeah. The guy. You're the guy, it said. So I had to email back about four times to say, 
I, I'm English. You need to explain my, you know, like, what do, what do you mean? I need more than that. Is the job fine? You know, so anyway, he said, uh, he said, you're yeah, the, the guy. guy. You're the guy. You're the guy. Um, so that, that was it. Um, but I mean, artistic, uh, you know, I've been, I went to university and did fine arts painting and I am a rare book. De- I've dealt in rare books and uh, books under borderland books in the UK for uh, the last 20 years, specialise in horror. And this is this was always the dream. And over the last three or four years, I started to do more serious work and focus more on instead of dealing these wonderful books, I have to stare at every day by these great illustrators uh i'm I, I need to be one so i kind of and the rest of it i can hardly believe that the the, the, the these things uh, but hard work you know i do i do put in no i've put an enormous amount of work in the last few years so um yeah it's it's great to be uh to be doing this job wow what a, so three years from you're the guy to now or give or take that's that's pretty amazing. What a what a speedy trajectory, like straight to the top, in my opinion, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, no, um, <laughs> in mine too. <laughs> that's pretty impressive. Um, so you mentioned, you've mentioned like living in a coffin. I know that that's not a literal expression, but coming out of your coffin to do meetings and contact people and stuff. And on your website, you talk about... Um, living in a part of the UK that's famous for or infamous for witchcraft trials and executions it made me think of our own Salem Massachusetts in the United Absolutely. States and yeah. that is such a gruesome history but it's also kind of a tourist attraction as well sure. and um there's museums and i always wondered if if you're a kid and you grow up around that type of atmosphere does that have an influence on you and has it had an influence on you and your interests as you've grown up or were you always destined to be a horror illustrator um no i i think that it i think that it does i think it hugely influences um what you do i mean from a young age i i, I was sort of everyone's very familiar with the witches i in fact live at the bottom of pendle hill i you know i i can literally walk 15 minutes i'm on the hill where the, the burial mounds are so you know i <laughs> when my cat comes home at night my black cat bella um he um uh, yeah I, I sometimes wonder where he's come back from you know um <laughs> Who knows? Um, but no, I, the, these things definitely influence your, your, the work. And I think my first love was watching like the, the Hammer horror films. I was looking at my parents kind of really into weird films and TV. So I was kind of brought up on Hammer horror and Christopher Lee and Cushing and all those guys. And also films like The Wicker Man. I oh watched at a very young age. And that kind of thing about, you know, uh, the, the, what, what's now called kind of folk horror, um, uh, especially in the UK, although there's certainly American um, films and books written, like I'm thinking like Carl Edward Wagner's Sticks and things like that. It's an amazing story. Um, but um, yeah, it's this, because it, it, I live in the countryside, so, and it's steeped in all this history and, uh, you know this belief that you know the you're unearthing constantly these old spirits um are you, and not far from here is where wuthering heights was written you know the bronze sisters Man. which is very gothic novel if not all horror it certainly has gothic elements so yeah and you know i watched i, I think film you know like um brandon lee in the crow and tim burton and listening to the cure so i yeah i'm full <laughs> full goth boy um so that and the visuals and um, you 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 know you i think hr giga was the first um illustrator that i that you know i picked up a book i was lucky enough to go on a work experience um, thing at school where everyone was being sent to like an accountant's office or something I, and i got I, I was sent to a place that did um made merchandise for uh, metal bands they actually made merch for like um uh, like iron maiden and people wow. like that. and there, there was incredible this is pre uh photoshop had just come in like in the 90s 
So uh, the, there's this original artwork for like Fear in the Dark, uh, mm. like Maiden on the table and books by H.R. Giga, these great big Necronomicon and the alien art. And oh, I realized at that point, I thought this is that I remember that I remember the, the few days there thinking this, this is what I want to do. Uh, this is what I'm going to do with my life. You know, it took a further 20 year, 20 odd years to get there, but hey. <laughs> At that that moment when you when you're looking at something and you realize for the first time somebody else is doing this with their life, like this this is a business and this sure. book of Giger that he's an artist and he's famous and he's created some very disturbing and dark things. But we all have that moment where your light bulb goes off and you think, mm. oh my gosh, like other people, this isn't just for fun. Like they get paid, sure. they make yeah. money. Yeah, oh, well, it seems incredible, doesn't it? That, that you. Uh, I remember back then thinking, really, you can do that, you know, really, you make that. Um, and Dave McKean as well was like the big, if I could say one person who's the greatest influence on my uh, life as an artist, it's Dave McKean. Um, starting with uh, Arkham Asylum, I think I got when I was 12 or something. Uh, and uh, all the all the books from Neil Gaiman, um, and, and, San, and Sandman comics, of course, and Cages. Uh, I love Dave's work. Uh, in fact, the most moving thing of all of this for me is that he he did Night Shift for PS. Uh, right, right. So to move, move in his kind of footsteps felt surreal. Yeah, you're in. I mean, every one of the PS releases is they're similar, but they're so unique. They each have their own feel. And to me, sometimes they knock it out of the park and sometimes uh, I'm a little wishy-washy about sure. the results, but you've certainly entered into a realm of, with some really, really um, re highly regarded company. And now you yeah. have that group as well. That's pretty amazing. And it when is. I saw different seasons, I was, it's one of my favorites. I was worried that that it wouldn't, it wouldn't be amazing. But as soon as I saw your artwork, um, as soon as they started talking about it, I realized, yeah, yeah, this is this is going to be a good one. This is going to be something. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. But how? So you you mentioned you had a contact that reached out to Jared and said you should take a look at this guy's stuff. Jared from Centipede mm. Press. Um, how does one go about getting selected to illustrate a Stephen King book for PS Publishing? Did you pitch something to them? Did they? reach out to you out of the blue and say, no it's uh, no none of those things actually it's a great little story i um exactly almost exactly a year ago i went to a convention um horror convention uh, which used to be called stokercon but it, it i think it changed the name because there is a stokercon in the states uh and they called it and it's it was called chillercon okay um, um, and I think the guests of honor there were uh, Grady Hendrix was there uh, and uh, quite a few other guys. Uh, yeah, it, it was. So we, basically, I had a set up there in, a, in, a, in the big hall in the hotel. And it's near to where the convention is near Whitby, where Dracula is set. Um, and I'm very familiar with oh, this goodness. coastline. Um, yeah, yeah. In fact, I love it. I go every year. And. Um, but yeah, this. Um, so basically, I, I set up my pitch and PS have a pitch just over. Yay. Uh, and you're there for three or four days and very quiet periods. And I wandered over and I started chatting to Mike Smith, uh, who's the guy that does the design for PS. And I said, you guys ever looking for illustrators? And he said, yeah, all the time. I said, cool. Um, and I said, ah, great. Uh, I said, well, I'll have to contact you and send over. Anyway, so I wander back over and he must maybe, so I think he must have mentioned something to Nikki perhaps. And then Nikki came over to my stand and she looked at the work and we had a brief chat and she went away and I thought nothing of it. And the following day, um, Nikki came over again in the morning and said, I'd like to meet Pete. So I go over to meet Pete, and Pete's a dude. He's a cool guy. He has a kind of um, aura around it. You know, there's definitely something with Pete. I, I, I thought, 
so he's a, he's a, he had like kind of cool hat on and a Hawaiian shirt and uh, he's really relaxed and and I thought I'm being introduced I felt like I was being introduced to like one of the Sopranos or something you know um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know how much he'll like me saying that but you know, Hawaiian but shirts felt in like the UK that. that's yeah seems like it might yeah, stand yeah, out a little like bit. a surreal cat I thought I was meeting it anyway so I sit down and. He immediately starts to talk about Stephen King. Do I like Stephen King? And I said, "Whoa, well, yeah. I mean, you know, and went went started to go on about, um, you know, I was uh, twelve years old when I first read. There was a little mobile library that came into my village, and every summer, uh, I remember taking these great big chunky books out, and I I, I only I, I must." take the hardback the hardcovers even at this age 12 I, um, and some of them I didn't even read I kind of just got, I looked at the, the, the covers and uh, and loved but um but I read different seasons and I read it when I was kind of it must have been 12 or 13 I think maybe a little young to read it I don't know well but it was a long hot summer and I um and I, I actually felt like one of the kids living out in the countryside, even though this is in the States, set in the States, it didn't matter. You know, the dry land, the thirst, you know, long summer. And I read it and I, I really felt the uh, the power of it then, because even more than now, perhaps, because I felt like I was I was one of those boys. And my friends were. And I think that's why that. Um, story and and it actually for that matter um, resonates so much is because everybody has feels like one of those characters um, yeah. right and everyone knows a friend who is like one of the others and and it it takes you on some nostalgic level right back to childhood to a deeply rooted thing in you that it means so much more than all all of it so. It, he mentioned, I've gone off a little there, sorry. Oh, Mark. that's great. Um, but, the, um, but Pete mentioned, had I read different seasons? And I said, like, of course, yeah, it's um, incredible. Um, and he, he, anyway, he said, cool. And he said, I like your work. It was like 10 minutes, not a very long meeting. And he said, okay. Um, and then he describes the job a little bit. We need this, that, 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 and that. And I said, okay very verbal thing and um, and I said do I have the do I have the job and he said yeah shook my hand I said okay uh, but I was I kind of felt a little in dreamland at this point like this, this hasn't really happened uh, so when when it all when it all finished and I came home and I didn't actually see him Nicky after that which kind of instilled this anxiety in my brain that I dreamt it all up, perhaps. Um, uh, did I misunderstand? Did they, yeah, yeah, well, exactly. Uh, you know, I, I yeah. <laughs> so when I got back, I, I emailed them and they said that, no, we, no, we, what we're going to do is want you to produce three illustrations for us um, to send on to Steve. Okay. And I thought, whoa, Steve, I'll, I'll call him Steve. Mr. King, Steve. Steve. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, still, I'm, de- oh, yeah, I'm never Steve. ever going to call him Steve. I, I'm definitely not <laughs> on this level. Um, Stephen, Miss Stephen King. Why? So I, I send. I, I'm then going to a state of extreme panic. That okay, <laughs> I haven't quite got the job. I have to produce three, the greatest three images of my life, uh, and I, I, I spent a few days panicking uh, and then rereading everything. Yeah. Um, as quickly as possible, plowing through it. I read it twice through uh, in three days, which is some going. Um, and then, wow, yeah, that's, that's yeah, amazing. yeah, absolutely. Pla- I mean, speed reading in a sense, but reminding myself of the visual uh, clicks in there, if you will. Um, and what, which three am I going to do? Oh, actually, no, Pete said Shawshank. That's right. Sorry, I've forgotten. He said, give us, give me a couple from Shawshank. And so for whatever reason, I I loved the scene on the uh, the rooftop scene where Andy has got the, the beers for the guys. I really liked the scene. Mm-hmm. And the way that it describes Andy sat in the foreground as the guys are in the background, almost separate for them and having done it for them. I thought it was a really poignant scene and... 
Um, I was tr also trying to shake off the the film constantly. The whole year yeah, has yeah, been yeah. to shake off the films. This has been the most difficult bit of the whole job. Uh, and anyway, so I produce these images and send them. And they and then I have a wait for a little while. And then said they said Steve's given the thumbs up. Oh, my gosh. Like, I, I can't even imagine. I mean, t meeting your heroes or you didn't meet him directly. But what if you had you'd created you poured your heart out, you created these pieces, you sent them in and they responded and said, yeah, Steve thinks that this is garbage. Um, he he hates this work. <laughs> <laughs> he said under no circumstances yeah. should you ever contract with this guy that would be yeah I'm, i can't yeah. even imagine the the anxiety of uh, Stephen king doing my work and yeah. he'll either love it or he won't <laughs> yeah and oh the, the, the thing is whilst i produced these so i had about a week i had a, a week 10 days i can't remember exactly but i had this wisdom tooth agony through the whole thing <laughs> oh no um and usually i would it was so bad i i would you would have this would have put you out laid you out this the pain i was i was rattling with painkillers and feverish um and when i look back on it now i think it kind of fed the images i and um, and did what they need i don't know uh, maybe uh, and i also i did one for the tunnel scene of andy coming out of the tunnel which mm. was really um claustrophobic and yeah um yeah so to get the go ahead was um yeah incredible um that's, man that's amazing i um i think about the the sheer number of stephen king limited editions that there have been and some books have had multiple and some books have had none um and sometimes i i found myself questioning the justice of a world where we can have an illustrated limited edition of sleeping beauties but nothing of different seasons like to me before i realized this book was going to be a thing it was the most high profile stephen king book to have yet received any type of treatment like this mm -hmm. and to have been selected to do this book i think there were a lot of people that were really looking forward to this and that we're hoping that this book would get this treatment. I mean, it'd be one thing if you were selected to, there's a lot of lower profile Stephen King books, but this was, this was a big deal. Um, would this, oh, have, yeah. if, if <clears throat> they had come to you and said, you can pick any Stephen King book to illustrate would different seasons have been your, your choice. Would it have been your book no. too? If I'm honest, no. Um, yeah. It would it because um, and it would have been it. it say if okay. I could have chosen one, I would have chosen it. Would have been the uh, the one. Um, that's the book I'm most. Uh, that's the book that is feels most personal to me, but right. only because it feels almost like an like an extension, or it's in the same universe, or an expand like the body, but expand. It's the it's right. the idea of those boys and out there on their own, the losers club. Uh, mm -hmm. When you're an outsider or you're a guy, you know, like you you have this kind of like place at school, right? Thing you you eat, you very much these characters resonate with you enormously. They matter a great deal. I actually love them. You know, I, it's a love, yeah. it's a love, it's a genuine love and passion. Uh, yeah. And um, I think it was I was shortly into the book when I realised that. Um, how difficult it was going to be on on quite a few levels because I'm all I have illustrated and all I do is horror and I realized quite quickly that there are, there are, there are elements of horror in all these stories of course yeah. but it is not supernatural horror and we've got no night times so this is not Salem's Lot this is not Pet Cemetery uh, I'm not going to be able to it, I, I would have been able to take to those books immediately I, you know this it's a universe of color the palette the everything the subject matter would have been easy i say easy um a lot easier than different seasons would have been right in your wheelhouse of what you are totally doing. Yeah, totally yeah. um this has been like an enormous challenge um because for example the uh, the body has been the most difficult for me to illustrate on, on just on the back of 
I think it's the most iconic film of the three. Right, right. Um, even more than Shawshank, for me, uh, personally. Uh, and trying to throw all the images that you get in the film, trying to get Corey Feldman's face out of the, the <laughs> picture is almost impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to get uh, to forget about River Phoenix and to you know Will Wheaton and all those guys, um, every scene in it, every element of it, it's such a rich, beautiful film, and it keeps very close to the story too. The dialogue right. is spot on, uh, so you've got to kind of every, those boys and uh, and Shawshank too. All these images are absolutely. Uh, uh, burned into the retina of everybody. I, sure. you know, they are those people. They, they are that Morgan Freeman. Uh, you know, you and you've got a, you know, he's a white, red-haired Irish dude, red in the book, isn't it? You know, so you know, it's not black. <laughs> yeah, a bit different. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So you've got to. Um, it, it was difficult to. You, you 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 can get imposter syndrome right quite easily oh, yeah. how can i rethink this hugely iconic book um with new faces and new everything so it's very difficult it was very difficult uh at pupil was easier because the again the palette and the mood and everything matched m more e easier for me um uh, Shawshank was again uh, the palette I've chosen and the way that I did that worked easier uh, but also the body is because it's set mainly during like this blazing beautiful summer the 50s you've got this bright it just makes me think of those beautiful varsity jackets the great bright, bright colors um Milo's junkyard is full of color these mm. old like gas station signs um, so what I did was decided to go down the road of like the beautiful like Americana the um, King throws up into that story. It's just like a like a, a bottomless pit of visual. So I, I did that, and the breathing method was the was the joy of the whole book for me because and there was no there were there was no film, and mm. it is the most. It's the closest to horror. Uh, and there are supernatural elements in it to a degree, and I could just go completely free on that book, that that story. And they are my favourite illustrations in the book. Uh, I think they're the, the you know, uh, I, I'm proud of a lot of them, but um, I think they are my my personal favourites. The ones where I kind of surprise myself with them, you know, and that's always that's always nice. I can see that. Yeah, the three of the four stories having been adapted, um, even though realistically, I think people will understand it's a representation. It's a, your your conception of the characters. I did wonder someone's going to open it and go, that's not what that character looks like, because they will have these <clears throat> these images in their head. And I, I did wonder if the breathing method would be a much freer um, I think just because it's it hasn't had a movie, it's the least familiar to most people, I think it's my favorite of the whole collection. Um, there's just something about it. You know, when I read the collection the first time, just a few years ago, I don't know why I put it off. Um, it was rewarding and it was exciting, but it was very familiar. And then I get to the breathing method and I'm like, whoa, what is this? Um, this is like uncharted territory. So I'm glad to know that that was, that was one of my things that I was very curious about was representing something that had already been represented in a visual medium but yeah very a very um difficult thing to do but look uh, i uh, what i did was i came back to the text constantly sure um profuse notes um character descriptions um because they are different andy's description in is nothing like tim robbins right he's a slight blonde haired uh, almost effeminate uh, because the the guys were easily bullying. Uh, Tim Robbins is six foot through it, you know, he's a big guy, um, <laughs> yeah. and kind of Bill actually, you know, you can see, can't you, in the film? But he's very, he's described as these little bis like circular bespectacled guys who was kind of, um, I think he he worked in a bank, didn't he? And um, so the the whole feel of Andy is actually very different. So I tried to focus on. Uh, 
Stephen King's um, the, the the descriptions and to stay as true to the text as possible. And I thought if I do that, I can't really go wrong. Yeah, this book I, is for the fans of exactly. I I, fans, I yeah. I've become very aware over the last year of just how uh, of all fans of any author. Um, King's fans are the most, the craziest bunch. I feel very <laughs> at home, um, yeah. and uh, and and passionate to a crazy level. But also, I knew that I, I I've got to do, I, I have to do justice. I feel the pre- all the pressure of every, um, every everybody that's ever eyes have ever wandered across those pages. I felt the pressure, you know. Um, <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Oh man, I can't, I can't even imagine. One of the things that I was kind of hoping uh, for this release would be four volumes in a single slipcase. And when I was, when I saw your early artwork that you shared, I realized that each piece has a distinct feel. And it's because each story has a distinct feel that makes perfect sense. But I was still hoping maybe four volumes in one slipcase, even though I know it takes what's already an expensive item and would probably double the price but um was there was there ever any indication that that would be the direction that this would go or is that what you were thinking when you were creating or just no that was that that was the the original uh, plan uh, oh, okay. was to do four volumes um <laughs> and i i i i, uh, I spoke to it uh, spoke to nick and Pete and mike about it and we had this idea that the uh, in fact the whole re- the the re- part of the reason I got the job is because I because of the, the different styles that I I kind of you know I don't have a set um, one trick pony you know you you kind of stick to one way of working and you always produce work like that um, I kind of change between projects and what I think will work better so I don't hold myself to so we had this idea of doing that they are the four are so different. And to create a very different style, so perhaps say uh, do very like uh, strong graphic digital work um, on one, uh, maybe a traditional watercolor or painting on another, uh, mm. sketch work on another. So I like that, and that that was that was the original idea. Hence the different styles. Um, but then at some point. Um, P.S. Uh, had a meeting and decided to do a single volume. So um, we went from there, but with the idea of keeping the idea of the four different styles within the book, um, which I still think is cool. You know, I I, I, th- I too would have liked the four volumes because I think then you'd have got these four very different volumes, whereas now you've got four different styles within the book, which still totally works. And, yeah. and you know, different seasons is the single volume, but the you know um yes i it would have been nice to see wouldn't it i, I and i know that the i know that many uh the king fans would have loved that too and and been happy to pay uh, for it actually. yeah um, yeah i'm sure it would have added quite a bit to the price uh, yeah and, gone and they, of the course days. they have done it before too haven't they Mark? yeah with yeah the, with the stand you, you've got the three volume stand with don Maid's work haven't you and the Tommy Knockers uh, three volumes there as well. So we know they did, they did look great, those books. And even even Salem's Lot, which is, you know, a full Ooh. length novel, but it's sure. not, you know, a thousand pages long. Um, but I was thinking of, I think it was just five years ago or so when the Tommy Knockers was released, three volumes in one slipcase, and it was uh, easily 45 or 50 pounds or more dollars less than the release of the price of different seasons but just because everything has gotten so much more expensive i'm sure you know, i'm yeah. sure yeah. i didn't want to alienate people or scare them off but you mentioned um that the different style and the different mediums and i did want to ask you about that because some of the things are very clearly that i've seen very clearly are our paintings and you know you can see the medium used but then the clock face on the cover of the jacket looks photorealistic so i was curious um if you could talk about the mediums that you used and your approach to to these different styles 
Sure. Um, well, the um, well, the jacket is a kind of multimedia piece where you there are uh, drawn elements. Um, they 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 started with drawings. So there, there's um, the picture of uh, Stephen King on the back at his desk is just a drawing. Um, oh, okay. And then on the front cover, I had the idea of I wanted to use the original. Um, you picked up on that as well. I thought. Good man, he's seen it. Um, the shape of the the clock face, I thought, would re-echo that. And instead of like you have these old grandfather clocks that have painted dials, so I thought I'll put four. I'll put a story in each corner of the dial, and also people maybe will pick up on that. Uh, so I've also done four drawings, but the clock is a photograph uh of a clock and there are other photographs uh, within there which are taken into the drawings and photographs are then taken into photoshop and procreate and then colored digitally um mm. the, so you've got a really multimedia start with that because the colors just pop when you if i paint um like for example i could have painted uh, the breathing method but the those the lights the lights that you get in those uh, and the the colours really are really strong and I, I love the effect that you can use like the light brush on there to get um, things and and then at pupil is just painted it's just watercolour painting using very, a very monochromatic palette you know, just sort of muggy browns I wanted it to kind of look how Denker's apart his house is described. You know, the so smell <laughs> of this awful. Yeah. This, I mean, like, our pupil is a grim, bleak story. I, yeah. It really depressed me a great deal uh, doing some of it. I, it's a powerful story, don't get me wrong, but also it is very, it's a heavy story. Um, and uh, all the, the ones from the body are all watercolour paintings. That are, okay. are, they're just paintings, straight paintings, because I wanted to create a kind of almost like naive effect like um with the boys is to re-echo childhood somehow and i want like to innocence and yeah, yeah exactly that and um almost like what they would see or what gordy would see in a in a cartoon book that he reads perhaps or just that feeling of yeah um that nostalgic innocent world uh, that they're in uh, and of course that's kind of what the story is about isn't it like a path to um, mortality or, and realizing that there are more, you know, the, and the, the, de the dead kid and all of it is kind of metaphor, isn't it? I think I, that's what I felt like. Um, and yeah, I mean, you start off with one image and it informs all the others, you know, if you, right. if you get one right, the, then you think, well, now I kind of know where I'm going. Mm -hmm. Um, and the first image I did for the body was the um, the train uh, walk the guys walking along the train track with Castle Rock, the in orange, the, and the green trees, Ugh, so good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know, not that one, Mark. Actually, um, oh, not that one. one. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a double page spread oh. with the whole of Castle Rock in the background. Nobody's seen this one yet. Oh, um, oh nobody's so seen it. The first one I okay. did was a large painting. Um, and then all the others followed from that. Um, like, so like I was trying to get in loads of detail into Milo's yard and things like that as well. Uh, so yeah, it was interesting to use the different mediums, but for the, for the dust jacket and the slip case, I wanted, the, I wanted this rich, really bold color and the light hitting things. So in which case they're drawn and then I use Procreate to color them digitally. Um, with photographic elements so you get this multimedia thing going on oh fascinating thank you for sharing for somebody like me who is fairly ignorant to the process um, I find the whole thing fascinating you can take something that you made on paper and then you can digitally modify it and um, anyway yeah I, and I was really quite cool. averse to to using a computer for a long time uh, or using any kind of technology i thought was like oh no no <laughs> yeah no. it's cheating it's not real yeah you know yeah. Yeah. but until um i'm you know I, i've experimented so much over the last few years and and procreate 
is an incredible um, one of the uh, because people don't understand that to, in order to draw in Procreate uh, and paint in there is no less difficult than doing it. Uh, like if you you can only produce something that on there that you could produce if you could paint it. There is no difference. You're just painting with a brush. It's it's the same, but. The, there's something about the way that the the colours um, are so vibrant and you can create layers like you do in Photoshop to create more depth and things, um, which I just, I, I really like. They, you, you know the, the one from the breathing method, it was in like the orange lights of the ambulance and uh, hmm. the head, you know, it's the grim scene in the snow with the head and Oh, um, you, the, the effects of the light on the snow, you could get this incredible bounce off the stuff using it. So, yeah. That's awesome. That's great. You did um, reference, and, and I held up my copy of the original Different Seasons artwork by Canuco Craft. Um, not every Stephen King cover is successful. Not everyone is particularly memorable, but this one... I think really hits the nail on the head. And this was the image for me for a long time because it was on this, sure. um, the the hardcover US and UK. It was on paperback releases for years and years. Yes. Um, yes. It's not as famous and well-known. Oh yeah, yeah, there you go. The UK. I've got a hardcover first here, which is now, I've, I've kind of ruined it. Um, it was a lovely first, first in really nice condition <laughs> when I bought it. Not anymore. Well, but... I mean, in some ways, it would be like having Stephen King's own dog-eared copy. It's like there, there's an association here that makes this really special, but um, it's not as familiar to the general public as, say, the the actors who are in the movies, but it's very familiar to Stephen King fans. Were you, um, was it part of your process to try to pay tribute to that piece? Did it influence how important was it to you to sort of make reference to what had come before because it was the only like the most famous cover image for different seasons up until this point so how did that influence yeah your yeah and I, yeah it's the only cover i ever saw too and on paperbacks in the uk here in the uk and the hardcover and it's um i think the, um realizing the 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 king universe uh if you will um Things are important and nostalgia is important. And these covers, I, I love the, I, I really love a lot of the old dust jacket covers. They mean a lot, a great deal to me. Like the, the UK it. Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I really adore that. Um, and I love the misery, the US misery cover. It's really simple, but the shadow at the back. And um, oh, many of them, many of them. Are the, the UK carré is mind blowing. Oh my um, gosh. The, the first, yeah, yeah. the great. So much better than the US. Like that yeah. fashion model on the cover, that is not Carrie White, but that UK cover, no. so good. <laughs> It's great, uh, but um, it's, you know when we do when you become when you're doing these uh, new covers, and you, you of course you you always feel like you're paying homage, homage in some way to what's gone before. Um, and I I kind of figured with the jacket and with the cover, I wanted to if it, there's a kind of a, if it doesn't work, if it don't you know if it's not broken kind of thing, right. you know don't <laughs> right right. I, I, it, it's, it works so well, um, but I thought I want to do a kind of spin on there, like a riff on this, if you will. So mm -hmm. mainly with the uh, um, with the slip case, it's quite obvious, like, even though it's not a circular pan, which I, I very nearly did at one point, just do my own four panels uh, and almost just repeat it. Your own four yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But I did a couple of sketches where I'd I'd done them linear like this, uh, and I thought it would work on the slipcase. So when I started to work it, I thought I really like the flow of the set. I like the drop like this. And it just worked for me. I, I I liked the way it worked. So using similar like the sun face is like again like the one that Kanuko uses on there. The uh, it's it's like an image you get on old Victorian prints and things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so, the, the so I've done a similar, and the moon, of course. So to re-echo those things, so it creates kind of nostalgia for King fans, 
basically sort of people go, hey, I get, you know, I love the idea of people going, oh, I get this. Like he's done yeah. this, you know, like, yeah. for this reason. Um, but also to make it, so it's very definitely my own too, you know, yeah. uh, very definitely my own piece of work. Um, so yeah, there's actually a tiny little like dark tower on the edge of the moon. If you look on the slip, <laughs> okay. which, um, which I thought I can't put a, why am I going to put the dark tower in different seasons? I can't do that. But there is the, the shape. If ever anyone wants to know what the tiny little black thing where the moon is and the tree next to it and the little moon next to the tower, it is the dark tower, which I've just popped in there for no reason at all. Oh my God. Other than to please, please. The King, guys. <laughs> um, also, you can thank Mike Whelan for that because he, uh, he, he, he. I think he, uh, he messaged me at some point and said, "Well, he's guy in one of the groups. I don't know if you know Mike, Mark, but he, but he said, he said, he said, drop, drop the, drop the dark tower in there.' So I said, oh, okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> it's subtle enough for not to not notice it too. But I just thought I'd say it. <laughs> well, that's it's, it's there. that's fascinating and it's a great segue because like we you've mentioned and we've talked about how how obsessive and i mean this in the best possible way that stephen king fans sure. can be and i wanted to ask you about easter eggs i also wanted to ask you about your attention to detail so on the back of the jacket stephen king is typing away and i, I love the the leaves just blowing out of his typewriter but that typewriter is period specific the type oh. of typewriter that he may have been using at that time if i'm not mistaken um how how much research did you do so if you i'm going to put stephen king and he's typing well i can't just put him at any old typewriter i certainly can't put him in front of a computer word processor so did you do research and what what kind of typewriter was he using and and how did that inform oh just crazy bro great yeah my my brain i i have to do that i have no other way of doing anything actually um i i have to um so of course uh, when the book was written um i forgot the date now is it 80 I can't remember, but the first thing I did was was Google as many '80s pictures of Steve that I could find um, of that period, um, and ta and the typewriters, and I found a couple of photographs and things, and then looked at the model and thought, um, I can't. It, there's no name on the photograph the model is using, but it, it is from a photograph of the same year that that was written that it was written, things like that. But throughout every single story, like for example, um, Milo's uh, junkyard, mm -hmm. and there are things like where it describes like the water um, canister things and, uh, and the signs and the old shell. So everything, the cars from 19, so I'm looking back and then thinking, Oh gosh, what date are we in with the body now? Uh, it's 1950. Uh, okay, so I'm looking at the car, like what exact car? So every single there's a, there's an image from the junkyard with piles of cars. There there isn't a single car in there that's not of that oh, period. Uh, and not only I that, thought, they have to be wrecked and piled. And they have to be wrecked. <laughs> sir. Yeah, or the taxi in uh, the in the in the breathing method too is like a nineteen eighty. You know, it's a taxi from the late seventies, New York, for example, things like that, where you don't want to get it wrong and pay. You know, so it's um, it looks like one of those. I've, I've, I'm not quite sure of the model uh, of the car now, but it's like the old Fords we had in the UK, but very similar. But I, I, yeah, so I, I put in like nineteen seventy eight New York cabs. Uh, but every image um, I have had to go back and I've made mistakes too, you know, when you, you, I've done a drawing and then thought, he can't be wearing this jacket, you know, like, or they wouldn't have, this wouldn't uh, get rid of that light or that, this is, you know. Um, oh, man. So it things down to like Andy's, uh, you know, the, 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 the clothes, the, the, the prison that someone would wear at that period, and also over the periods of time that Shawshank takes place to be true to the progression in the story. Um, uh, yeah, everything, right? Down to like there's a tattoo on one of the guy's hands in a, in a particular image. Um, and I, I would say like, I know, right, and we're in the 
seven mid 70s so tattoo styles in mid 70s or everything everything within the images is um oh the, there's a there's a, a double image of the train scene mm -hmm. in the body so i researched oh, the, the trestle thoroughly. and they're running across the yeah, yeah, yeah. the trestle oh, train yeah. the iconic scene i've painted that um and they, I had to I, I, go into real detail about the trains that, that, that were used, um, what would have been on a cargo line like that in the 50s, for example. Mm. Because I, I was terrified one of you guys would say, <laughs> e Eli's crap, you know? One of us this guys. Train one, yeah, yeah. Like this. <laughs> yeah, so I, I had to, I, I, in total fear of being mobbed by everybody, at some point <laughs> what well, it um, helps to I, even further sort of illust illustrate no pun intended the amount of like the scope of this project not only so the body stand by me very famous everyone already has ideas of what these kids look like but then so there's that pressure and then the pressure of how famous this book is in general and then all the research that goes into getting those tiny details more some people will notice some people will appreciate but more than most people but it just lends that sense of it just pulls you in because nothing stands out as being wrong or out of place it's really i'm getting a bigger understanding of the scope of your achievement as we go through this Thank you. um well yeah. the perfect example actually that i can give you for this mark was was two days ago i'm doing a painting of ace and um eyeball and they're described as wearing like the duck the the, the da haircuts and the varsity jackets and i did an entire painting and i put a uh, i put a letter the the school which i don't think is even mentioned what school they're at i can't remember now, but i was going to put a letter on on his jacket and i realized i then researched varsity jackets and realized that you only got letters put onto varsity jackets if you're achieving and you're doing great stuff and of course i'm in the uk so i don't get what varsity jackets really are so i researched that and then think ace would never have won this so i have to remove his, his thing oh man but details like that where i think Ace would never have got that. I mean, th I know that sounds kind of crazy detail. N nobody would probably men notice that, but I had to, yeah, it had to go. So I, I did it again. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my, so, I never had a letter jacket or a varsity jacket, but I think anyone who wanted to pay the money could just buy one. And then all of the stuff that you would hang off of it, that was yeah. based on accomplishment that, amazing attention to detail and i want to talk about the scope of the project as well so ps is like their releases that i've seen whether the pictures the illustrations are in black and white or color or like we'll take the dead zone for instance there's full color um slipcase dust jacket different images on the boards the end papers like 30 pieces inside the book um how many did you create for different seasons? How many did PS request and how many did you end up actually creating? Um, PS requested 30 illustrations. 30, okay. And I've done 30 illustrations. And that was over the course of one year? Over over the course of a year, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and there are, like, there are numerous paintings that I've done as well that, are, that ha haven't been, that won't be used. You know, they, they were I either not quite right or i was unhappy with them um or ps were, were a little unhappy or mm. uh, that. so i chain you know um reworked those but there are 30 there are, there was the dust jacket uh the slip case 30 interiors the Man. um signature page uh, and end papers as well, I think. So it's, it's a huge job. I, I didn't realize when I took it on quite how, because usually 12, 12 full illustrations for a book is kind of regular, right? I, Jared asked for it 12, um, and it, that takes a long time, 12, but 30 plus all the, is, is, all, is a heck of a lot. It's like doing three of those books simultaneously at the same time. Yeah. I bet. Um, 
<clears throat> did so as you were going through um you were working were you keeping ps in the loop constantly so they could give you feedback before you had invested too much time um and what was Stephen King's role in all of this? Did did he just green light you as the illustrator in general and then leave PS to work out the details? Or was he reviewing your work as well as you went along? Well, um, the initially um we uh, I was sending every image to 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 PS and we were um kind of three way. I was I was emailing Pete and uh, I was emailing Nikki and uh, Mike was looking and we all having different opinions and then I said we I ended up just well, it would be better um I, Nikki and I just ended up kind of conversing because it's quite difficult to um you know, you need to get really focused on what needs to be done. And, yeah. and, and too many, co you know, we all... Too many uh, cooks in the kitchen. It, yeah, exactly. And it becomes yeah. quite difficult. But we, yeah, um, I send the early ones. Uh, or, uh, every image I do, I, I send to PS. And in the, uh, with the early ones, uh, you know, because at some point I'd be doing the first ones for the body or the first ones for uh, at pupil. Uh, so you were getting ideas of tone. So um, I did some things and then we thought, oh, maybe we should try it a different way. Um, so in the early days, quite, a, you know, lots of to in and fro um, until um, I think probably like four or five illustrations in when I'd done a couple, one or two for each one. And we had the style down and we we're happy that after that, everything I sent, um, we, I just sent and I think the the very early ones I don't know whether I'm not entirely sure whether uh, Stephen King sees everyone but I think that I, I do think that Pete and Nikki keep keep him in the loop with a lot because um they, they Nikki always said to, to send send images so they could send them on to Steve and even quite a few into the project said yeah thumbs up again uh from Steve. Mike sent me a message once saying like uh Steve said thumbs up awesome or something like I can't remember now but go ahead with it so it felt great so I, I've not actually exchanged any messages with uh, Steve I, I I wish I could um but uh basically just to kind of grovel at his feet <laughs> and say to to uh to have worked on this is the dream come true and he probably uh, oh, i'm going fishing or some shut up yeah yeah <laughs> you know um yeah um it doesn't you know actually to work on it and just see my see my it, the, the buzz of the whole thing is is grand enough uh but he to know that he certainly in that those uh, if the illustration, those early ones, and then when getting the tone of everything right with them, um, I think they must have sent him a dozen at least, mm -hmm. um, or maybe they've sent all. I don't actually know, Mark, is the truth. Um, but I know that he's seen quite a few and definitely has given them the, the thing, or, or it just wouldn't happen. Uh, and also, I think that he's very uh, protective of his uh, of the the books uh, and i think different seasons is quite kind of personal from what i've read from interviews it's a personal book for him and um i don't think anything would have been sent out that, that didn't uh, resonate with him in some way so and he, that, he that seems to sense. be like you said, like we said before like a, i think he seems to be a big fan of the arts and, and mm -hmm. doesn't he um, seems to be into it He's supported, there's been a lot of different artists, a lot of different styles mm -hmm. in the work. Um, and some I just absolutely adore and some just aren't my cup of tea, but I get the sense that he must be a fan of art in that representation process. But I think you're right. You spoke to how personal this book is for him. And I know that it was a risk in his career, you know, take these sort of odds and ends pieces that went against what he was known for at the time and mm -hmm. and put them out. And I wonder if that has had something to do with 40 plus years of this book existing in the world and no limited, no illustrated edition. I don't know if people have proposed to him, can we do this? And he has said, no, no, the time's not right or, or what? I mean, we'll probably never know, but... Um, yeah. So you talked about how much work this 
project was, but once you got going with it, did it go fairly smoothly? What is your, what's your schedule like? How do you, how do you organize your time when you think I've got 12 months and over 30 original illustrations that I need to do was, were you talking like 12 hour days for 12 months or how did you organize your time? Um, well, it's, it, it's been pretty full on. I, I mean, I have, I've had all that many other projects on the go at the same time, but this has been the, the, the predominant thing well, that I've been working on. Every, yeah, I, I pretty much. Um, I, I find it impossible to switch off from it um, to the to the angst of my family, you know, <laughs> girlfriend. And, Are uh, you still working on this book? Isn't it done? Yeah, will it will he ever will he ever talk about anything else again? <laughs> <you know>? Um <sighs> do I think Denny's hair is right and the thing, you know, like oh, go away. You know, like, <laughs> it's like my uh my my long suffering girlfriend. Um but um no the great thing was um that I really appreciated was when when I started, I was sent a really detailed uh, list of 30 images. Uh, with description, um, which I, either Nikki or Pete did, or both of them did, um, but uh, I don't know. But it, but it was very, very helpful, and I've only diverted from it uh, uh, with a couple where I thought mm, we've got, had one of the, that that's kind of similar to this. Um, let's do this that we've missed out. But for the most part, the list that. Um, Nikki and Pizza was was fantastic and reading through the books I, those they are all the images I would have chosen you know they, it was a great so they, they obviously did a very thorough job deciding on that so what I first did was write out um all 30 images on a giant card you know with the, with the names shortened to whatever you know like leeches uh, <laughs> um all, all the different kind whatever and then um I'd already started because I'd done the couple of images for Shawshank. I was kind of into that one. And uh, when you, when you've made that start on what the style is going to be and what it's easier. So, um, Usually I'm quite uh, thorough. I need to like do one, finish it, then move on to the next. But I, I haven't done that with this book. Uh, I've tried to keep, um, because there was so much to do, um, you could easily neglect one story, and yeah, I've been trying to keep all of them spinning at any one time, so I could turn to it. So I'd look at the wall, and uh, and then write, normally write down sketched or this, or if I've come up oh, with gotcha. uh, the ideas. So um, yeah, so that that's kind of the um, that's kind of the way I do it, and. You, with all the different mediums too, you get into a little bit of a run with it. If I'm painting, I tend to do two or three or four in a row uh, that are painted. So um, you find that I do three or four from app pupil at once, you know, and then, mm. but the, the, the body is the one that's been, been the most challenging, probably because of the details. Um, uh, painting is, uh, is difficult because you, you know, you can't really make, much of an error with it you know it's hard to describe to people but when you're uh, 14 hours into a painting and you kind of something's not working it's quite difficult because you've been you've put so much time in to, to something you know um so then you have a break or or you you basically you 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 just you're you forget, you know, the ideas aren't coming on one, turn it to another story. So that's actually been quite nice because if it was a novel, you'd feel lost within the whole thing. Whereas with this, if I would say I was, uh, something was bouncing along nicely, I'd just carry on doing it. Like the breathing method, I just flew through the lot of them mm. um, in one go. Back that's interesting, back. is it? So it, it sounds like it might actually be easier to do a collection in a way than to do a novel where you have just this deep dive and you don't have, you can't change your focus because it's the same story mm. the whole way through. That's really interesting. And I didn't know. It's lovely it, because you would actually wake up and go, mm, it's an app pupil day. 
You know? <laughs> you look outside and it's a little moods. overcast yeah. and miserable. Whereas and... genuinely, you know, it's raining outside or terrible or you, you've not slept very well. You think, I can't, I can't deal with that pupil today, you know. Um, you know so that's, the, that's what it's like. Um, but, yeah, for the most part, they have all, uh, it's been an incredible learning learning curve um but for me it's all down in the when i've when the drawings have gone down it's all in the, the initial drawing and the sketch if when the ideas are down if it clicks and it pops i know it instinctively and the painting and the finishing of that is easier it's it's getting the idea it's making the idea work gotcha um like for example, leeches uh, the, the, in the body. I, I I've done it about four times, and it just <laughs> won't work. I I just thought these boys, and that if you get them from a distance and you paint it, they just look like black dot. You don't know they're, they're leeches, perhaps. Uh, and the, and also these kids are kind of uh, nude and running around in the water. It's a right. weird image. <laughs> so many in the in the body. You're trying to instill fear, but you've got this great, beautiful sunlight and the woods and the um. It's a, it, an odd mix of things especially when you're used to doing like kind of horror because you're actually painting something that's very beautiful you paint the woods and you paint these kids in on an adventure so it's very for the most part it's different than that so whenever i got a place like i got to like ray brower's body i was like yes <laughs> gore, uh, gore um, um, yes blood death gore. <laughs> I, I, i'm home again oh. so yeah <laughs> When it comes to different seasons, are you the only person who has signed or did the signature sheets have to travel all over the world and get multiple signatures? Um, I, I think I, I have no idea uh, as it sounds, but I think I'm the only person um, signing them from, from, what I, from what I've gathered. Um, I think that's so on the one hand, you get to have your signature in a Stephen King book, which is amazing. But what, <laughs> and on top of everything else you've had to do, everything else you've had to make happen for this project. And then they say, just sign your name, you know, a thousand times <laughs> and, and some extra. Um, how do you go yeah. about divvying that up? Do you do as a few hundred a day or? <laughs> I've absolutely no idea about what I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work. I literally have no idea. I presume I'll just be sent all the sheets and then I'm going to have to, yeah. Um, but you haven't signed them yet. I've not signed them yet. Oh, Not even okay. been sent them. No. Okay. So that, that's, that will be a first for me too. Um, Interesting. I, I think I'm going to need a holiday, some kind of holiday. <laughs> a, th a thousand signature <laughs> some kind of writers like a brace or something yeah, something's gonna go uh, yeah sure. <laughs> yeah you can tell this was one of the first ones he did because it looks really nice and then yeah it just starts to just trail off the and page. stop working yeah just sweat and blood on the, you know all, <laughs> the ink is all smudged yeah. oh my goodness <laughs> so the numbered edition would have your signature at least and then the lettered edition will have your signature alongside Stephen King's signature. Like, I don't know. I don't know if it's literally alongside, but as the one of the primary contributors for this project, do you get complimentary contributor copies of both of those editions? I, I, I believe so. Um, I think yes. I do. Um, I think I get one of the... Um... I think I get one of the, the deluxe ones. Uh, I think it'll be, be a publisher's copy, PC copy ones. Yeah. And, uh, but I, yeah, I think, I think I remember Pete saying that, um, cause I, I, I remember it quite vividly actually, cause the idea of uh, Stephen King signing that and then me next to that made me feel pretty, uh, special so oh my god um, I I, i'm very excited yeah i am very, very excited and i get i think i get a, a one or two copies of the the um artist edition too which would be nice yeah. would that be your first signed stephen king book or do you have others in your collection um i i don't actually have any in my collection but i, I have had signed copies um via the when i doing the uh, the rare books uh, oh. that I've bought and sold. Um, 
but no um no that will be my first and it will be uh it will be treasured for, for, for oh my life. gosh a stephen yeah. king signature next to your signature i can't even imagine i'm i'm so excited for you I just thank, I just met you face to face so today and I'm so excited for you. I can't even imagine. Thank you, Mark. Um, for sure. Um you mentioned earlier, as so I asked you, you know, are are you relieved that this is over? And you said, over, what do you mean over? I've got a long list of remarks and and different things. So what what comes next in terms of the super fans, if they want something a little special, prints, original paintings, remarks, will you be doing all of that stuff? And is that organized? Sure thing. I, I've already started um, started planning this. So a little, a little bit of news for, for everybody is that um, I, I'm not sure exactly when, possibly next week, possibly the week after, um, but there will be a, I'm, I'm doing a limited edition print. Um, of the image from the body, which everyone's seen. Uh, I think it was the one that um, on social, on all social, seemed, everyone seemed to love the, 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 the orange peach and the sand. So I've created a limited edition poster from that of 150 copies nice. um, on really beautiful like archival paper. And it's uh, it will be signed and numbered. And there's an option, actual little box that I, where I'm going to do, if there's an option of a remark on the poster. Wow. Okay. Um, if, if anybody uh, wants that. So I, that will be, that will go out. It's going to go out in the, um, I'll keep, every, anyone that wants to uh, sign up for my newsletter should do that just because I send out um, all information via that. Uh, okay. And also people should check out artists' websites because they never know things crop up on that um but yeah i'll be doing that print also ps are going to put a link to that in their newsletter um but i uh, it may be available before then um it all depends on uh, on my printer and uh and things but yeah I, either way within the next two weeks there will be that and um, then when everybody gets copies of the the book um i've already had many requests to do remarks um uh many i i've been kind of inundated with requests to do remarks which is which is makes me is, is a wonderful thing i i love that maybe i love that more than anything um the fans wanting extra in this book means a lot to me because they've already paid a lot of money for this book so to want something special in there and i'm really happy to accommodate what people want as well within reason you know and mm -hmm. um, if they want something from a specific story uh, i'm happy to do something say from the body if that's what no problem at all um and so when when the books are in people's hands i'll start doing the remarks i have to say i must the, i think there are nearly 40 people wow on aura oh, and I've, i haven't said anything yet so people have just dm'd me uh, will you do remarks uh, yes is the answer uh, and i'm happy to do them uh, until I, I pass out and collapse. <laughs> just, oh man. And when, if they have to ship the actual books to you, then just a mountain of boxes and the, yeah. the postman will be just delighted with all of these boxes. Uh, yeah. And just an important thing to add, Mark, is that if any US customer, which most, most people are actually, um, want to have the book, just ask Nikki um uh to ship the book to me in the uk and then i'll send it on a cost postage to anyone in the states just okay. saves everyone from having that sent all yeah. the way up to the states and then all the way back up to me is ludicrous as soon as uh, ps towers is an hour and a half away from me um, oh that's so, awesome yeah so uh, people should just uh, I, I think nikki has been doing that for a few people so they seem to be ha very happy to do that um so yeah, I'm very happy to do remarks. And then after that, the original, I'm going to put the original art up for sale. Oh um, man. Which will be 30 originals. Uh, the, uh, the uh, you know, I, I have to get this. There are really good, cool sketches and there are paintings that have not been used also, um, which despite not being in the book that, you know, this, they, they are, they are part of that story. So they, they may be of interest to people too. Um, 
I, I would say people have already inquired as well about originals, and if there is anything specific, people should just uh, give me, let me let me know. Um, regarding that, um, there are, for example, uh, many of the uh, the pieces that are kind of drawn and then digitally coloured. Um, what you will get with an original, what I'm going to do with these to make them really special for the collectors is they all the, digi the images that have been coloured digitally will be printed on a maple wood panel, which mm. I'm then going to hand paint, I'm going to hand finish um, the, the, the image. Uh, so you will get that, and you which is a one-off print. Oh, um, my gosh full colour, but you will also get the drawing that goes with that, the original drawing. So it's kind of a little package. Um, oh, yeah. The paintings are just straight paintings. So all everything for the body, they are just watercolour paintings. And everything for at pupil are just watercolour paintings. Everything else is that digital work with it. So instead of just giving you the drawing, it doesn't give the feel of the finished thing. Um, you, there'll be these, this beautiful colour thing that I'm going to finish by hand and maybe they're going to have laser etch titles at the bottoms, for example, as well, and things wow. like that. So it's going to be very special uh, and they will all go up on the website. But if anybody has anything specific, an image that they really like, they any, just uh, DM me, I, uh, you know, um, send me a message. That is, that's wonderful. I That's really exciting. And I guess... I don't know. I, in a sense, I would be surprised you took all the time to create this stuff and then are just willing to let it go. But I'm looking around my own space, which has precious little open wall space to use. Like, what are you going to do with two dozen paintings? Are you going to just display them everywhere or, you know, store them away or they, they move yeah. on, they live, they have another well, life. This, this is the thing. And your relationship as, as, a, as the artist to the work is actually quite different. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the paintings have been produced for the book and the book is the object for me, right. the, 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 where everything comes together. And that is the most important thing. So they, the deluxe copy signed by Stephen with the illustration, that is the, I can't, there is nothing greater than that with this project for me. Um, the, the paintings that I, I, I would write, you know, I, there may be one or two I keep actually, Mark, to be honest, I, that I'm quite fond of. Maybe the first one that I did, because it meant it, it, it's where everything else flowed from. And I remember doing it through, through that hideous toothache. Uh, <laughs> um, I was weeping through that one, man. Oh. I, you know, I really mean that. I was, I was in agony, and I thought, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to do this. So the, the, a few of them mean a great deal, so I probably will keep them. But um, the others, I, I would rather go out there to, to, um, to, to you know, uh, fans and people that would appreciate it. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you what comes next, what other projects are you working on, but I get the clear impression that you are not done with different seasons and that's going to be going for a while, but do you have any other sort of high profile things coming up that you're excited about and able to talk? Yeah, about? I do. Um, well, the, um, the, I'm, I'm currently working on um, a limited edition for Grady Hendrix. Um, oh, fantastic. Uh, I'm doing the work on how to sell a haunted house. What <laughs> is that going to be from SST? It is. Oh yeah. my goodness. Oh my goodness. I so just I, I've it. been spending a lot of time with Pupkin and friends. Oh my God. Pupkin. Wonderful. My dream book. would be to meet him. I would, I would ask him if I met him, if he could sign it. Kaka wee wee. Love forever. <laughs> Pupkin. Um, oh, that's yeah. exciting. That is really Yeah. Grady's incredible as well. And I'm, again, I met him at the, at the same convention. Where, where P.S. were at because he was the guest of honor. And we, we spent an hour talking about M.R. James and ghost stories. And I, I love Grady. He's a, he's a cool guy. And I, I really love his books, actually. I really do genuinely love them, uh, especially this one, because the world of strange puppetry and, and things. Yeah. I, I, and the family, the, the story, everything about it, the layers within it, I, I really love. So um, it's a blast to do that. And then I'm I'm doing Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, oh my um, gosh! Yeah, for uh, I, which 
and I'm doing myself actually. It's uh, I'm I'm going to publish it myself. It's a dream. It's what I, of all people, um, other than Mr. King, that I, that I could ever want to illustrate, it would be Edgar Allan Poe. Um, and I feel that the the greatest illustrations ever made for Poe were done about a hundred years ago. Um, Gustave Doré and Harry Clark did these incredible illustrations and some sort recently did uh, an edition of Edgar Allan Poe but I was slightly disappointed that he'd reproduce Doré's illustrations again which mm. has just been done so many times and I, I hope there'd be brand new ones um, so I thought you know what I'm going to do my own Poe um, and if it just fizzles into dust then so be it I will have illustrated them anyway um, so it's yeah. a personal project, and if people buy the book, that'll be that'll be great. Uh, but I, it's just something that I, that I've thought about for ages and want to do. Unless, of course, um, uh, somebody contacts me to do a great job, um, another great job, and then I, I can put it to one side for a while. Um, but yeah, so just finishing up with this, Mark and Grady doing Grady's book, which is a blast. I'm really enjoying that. Um, and then Poe, maybe, or to see see what else comes comes along. That's fascinating. I mean, it's it's really exciting too, and I've seen it. Um, I've seen it in the last few years with illustrators like Francois Viancourt, who he gets a big break. He does revival for Levidian, um, which mm. was Letterpress Publications, and it was a big a big breakthrough. And then next thing you know, he's all over the place. He's illustrated sure. all kinds of things. And it seems yeah. like, I mean, you've, you're you well on your way, but this is certainly going to take your exposure and your popularity to the next level. So I'm uh, I'm really excited to see what the future brings and that Grady Hendrix collaboration. And I'm going to be super excited to see that one. Oh, when thank you. Comes thank out, you bet. Yeah. But is there anything out of all of this that you wish we had talked about that we haven't we haven't covered today is there anything else you'd like folks to um, know you know Mark, no, i don't think there is i think the the <laughs> the, the list that we we've done we've done well here um it's great i think we've covered everything and anything that i thought about talking about i kind of rambled on about it anyway so um uh, great to, great talking to you because it's just been yeah been a blast being able to uh, get all that out remember i do live inside my k you know, you know um so and you know when you be, when you do this when you do this job people don't realize that it's quite a solitary activity yeah. um and to be able to just warble on like this is kind of cathartic <laughs> i you know i can get it out a little bit expel the energy somewhat um <laughs> well i'm glad i i looked up on, on YouTube, I tried to find other interviews or examples of you talking or speaking about your work, and I, I couldn't find any. So I'm I'm really hopeful that this is going this to be very interesting for a lot of people. Yeah. And I I'm really I really am honored, and I appreciate that you you chose me for for this. But you're very kind. Um, yeah. Well, um, it has been an absolute delight and an honor. I, I thank you very much for your time. I wish you all the best. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye.